Um, I thank Deputy Brady for bringing forward this really important piece of legislation and I totally support the sentiments behind protecting homeowners and trying to make sure that everybody has home insurance, There is, uh, irrespective of the area in which they live. I think what's important in respect of this bill and what it attempts to do is to think about the role of the state and what the role of the state is and isn't. And it's absolutely clear that the role of the state is making sure that the infrastructure is there to prevent flooding in the first instance and then to elect, make sure that insurance companies will provide insurance as the deputy has, has described. What the state's role isn't is to interfere in a market in a way that creates other types of problems. And so for that reason, I'm setting, uh, putting forward a timed amendment for 12 months to allow us to discuss this a little bit further, because there's quite a lot of complexity in what the bill is suggesting. And I'd like to go through some of that, if I may, and then perhaps respond to some of the, the issues that you've raised. Um, I would set out in the first instance that, of course, the department is not interested in receiving information from industry only, which is why I know you yourself referenced the central bank's ongoing work in this regard. And clearly, I, I know that the deputy will regard the independence and the data coming from the central bank with, 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 with some regard. So I think we are on the same page in relation to that. Um, on the bill, on the actual technicality of the bill, just dealing with it in the first instance, there is a problem with the bill from an EU law perspective and the solvency directive in particular. Obviously, Ireland is part of the EU. We have signed, obviously, we're part of this, the, the, the European Solvency II Directive. And that directive prohibits a member state adopting rules which require insurance companies to obtain prior approval on special policy conditions and premium levels. So there are, there are, there are EU level problems with this. But more particularly, um, there are, I believe, a few constitutional problems that I think it's worth setting out. And again, it speaks to sort of the role of the state in this or not. You have correctly said that you know, the society is dependent on commerce and business as much as it's dependent on other things and whether you you know whether the bill applies to insurance companies or any other sort of commercial organization where you take the commercial risk assessment or the commercial decision making away from a commercial entity which is sort of the point of of the bill in, in some respects um, you are interfering in their capacity to for freedom to contract to for freedom to you know, to, 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 to operate their business as they see fit and to do so also without a right of appeal. So that's sort of a new standard in terms of intervention in a commercial market. And that is a political choice and I appreciate that Deputy is entitled to make that choice. But there is a broader read across on what the state's role is in terms of intervening in commercial decision making more broadly. Um, it does straight up interfere with freedom of contract and there's no right of appeal provided. But look, that could be provided at a later stage. But there is an access to justice issue there where for all persons, whether they're individual or body corporates. There's also just um, a number of difficulties with the central bank and the financial services and pensions ombudsman. It is the bill at the moment gives them requirements and obligations that go beyond their current mandate. I don't know whether the deputy has had the opportunity to consult with both of those organisations in terms of what their view might be, but it would require at a minimum legislative change, never mind policy change, and of course the European Central Bank would have to be consulted in that way. There is then a broader set of unintended effects, I believe. Now, I appreciate what the deputy is trying to do, and I agree with him in terms of making sure that that we have insurance for all homeowners. That is the essence of what you're attempting to do, and I totally agree with that. But what we must do is approach that in a way that doesn't create unintended effects for the operation of the market more broadly. Ireland remains a small insurance market, and we want to have more insurers here, not less insurers here. We want to oper an operating environment where insurers will come into the market. We are having some success with that. Uh, we want to make sure, and we want to hold the, the, the feet of the insurance industry to the fire in terms of provision of insurance, but we don't want to take legislative steps that demonstrate that we are going to intervene in the market in a way that makes Ireland unfriendly to the exercise of commercial activity in the insurance sector or any other sector. Um, so we, 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 there are a number of unintended spillover effects that I think have to be acknowledged in, when you start intervening in the commercial assessment by different countries, by, 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 the, by the state. Um, so there are just some, some practical difficulties with the bill itself. Nevertheless, can I say that I, I, I agree with the, with, the, with the purpose behind it and the work that, that has gone behind it. And I think it's worth considering sort of the broad genesis of this legislation and, and the work that has, has gone into this, as the deputy has, has referred to, since 20, I know there was a private members bill in 2016, in 2019 there was a very considerable regulatory impact assessment done um, and then the doll fell and the bill, the bill fell away and, and so on as happens. I actually think that the context has changed considerably even since then from an international perspective as much as from a domestic perspective. It's changed first in terms of pricing, it's changed secondly in terms of the level of collaboration at EU and international level on intervening 
um, in, in, in climate uh, in, in, in climate change and climate insurance uh, and I think it's well worth having a fresh regulatory assessment now four years on from that to reflect those different those different pieces also we've had the central bank analysis in 2021 um, and, and I just uh, and there's been and, and as the deputy has referred to considerable work done by the Office of Public Works in relation to demountable defenses we've also got new information in relation to how the the areas that may very well be at risk. You've referred to some in your own constituency. I have some in my constituency, particularly around the Sandy Cove area, the Newtown Smith area. I've speaking with Councillor Evie Tormey in Sutton, which is an area of considerable risk. But those areas are themselves changing and evolving, and I think it's very well worth considering a detailed regulatory impact assessment, uh, which would provide better analysis that we have now in 2023, even since 2019, on a couple of different uh, points. I would like to say, though, um, the. Oh, uh, uh, just in relation to the OPW Insurance Ireland work that's going on, the OPW, as you're aware and as you've referenced, is engaged in, in substantial body of work in relation in relation to this, and they are working with Insurance Ireland to provide that information. And you're quite you're quite correct in relation to that. They have a working group which has been expanded to include representatives now of local authorities as well, so that there is a better local understanding of the local situation and how to make progress and where the the the, the priority should be. Um, the OPW has provided very recently Insurance Ireland with detailed information on the various demountable defence types and the engineering involved. There is some positive news in relation that there is a progression now of a service level agreement of the defences in Mallow, for example, and there is assurance on operations and governance of the defences that the service level agreement will bring that should, I believe, result in insurers being more comfortable in the provision of cover in these areas but it goes much further than being comfortable it really isn't about being comfortable and this is where i went back to what the role of the state is and isn't the state i believe has a responsibility in respect of the construction of the infrastructure that's there and then it is the state's responsibility to to make sure as far as commercially possible without breaching eu law that there is no excuse for an insurance company not to provide the cover of the kind that we're talking about. And that's where I'd like to discuss this further, Deputy, and that's where I'd like the 12 months to discuss this further. How far can you go without intervening in a commercial market and having the broader impacts, not just the breach of EU law, but the broader effects in terms of commercial exercise in the state that I don't believe I don't believe you wish to affect more broadly, and that's why I'd like to suggest a timed amendment in relation to this. The central bank, as you said, and, 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 and can I assure the deputy and, and all deputies in the House indeed that the message is constantly being strongly impressed upon the insurance industry, both by myself and Minister McGrath. I think it's well worth looking at the central bank's most recent flood insurance survey, stating nationally insurers responded that 97% of all property insurance policies include flood cover, and that represents the baseline national coverage level. The survey then examined flood protected areas to compare against the baseline national coverage levels within the areas covered by 18 OPW flood defence schemes, both fixed and demountable. The results were that 92% of policies had flood cover in areas protected by fixed flood defences. 72% of policies had flood cover in areas protected by demountable flood defences, and 81% of policies had flood cover in areas protected both by fixed and demountable flood defences. Um, the OPW and the Department of Finance have agreed the principles of baselining flood cover ahead of schemes being completed, so that aims to provide a before and after of flood insurance for a small group of communities to be protected in the future, and it will allow us to spot difficulties much more quickly. Uh, in April 2023, there was a recent insurance, a recent survey carried out by Insurance Ireland with a pilot group of three schemes in Bray, Fermoy South, and the Dodder. The results, which we are still, which we are still considering, Deputy, I don't want to say that these are confirmed. We are still considering this, is that 81% of policies include flood cover for those groups. I really do want to say there are complexities with those figures, and that we are continuing to work on it. Nevertheless, I do want to provide the most up-to-date information to you. Um, Within the wider, uh, the, the um, excuse me, sorry, but work continues with Insurance Ireland and the Central Bank to ensure that we are assessing those figures correctly and that we are monitoring the provision of flood cover to the most, to the to the widest extent possible. Additionally, wider than the specific issue of flood cover is the impact of climate change on insurance more broadly, and on the costs and the uh, and how reinsurers and underwriters are considering climate change more broadly, and how that impacts Ireland. It is certainly the case that you know insurance is considered on a more global scale than just our the provision in our own market, and reinsurers are pricing into the market major climate events that happen, for example, in France or Germany, are having an impact more broadly 
on the under, uh, you know, on, on the cost that would, that would be provided to insurers in Ireland, and that is absolutely yeah, that is a hugely significant piece, and I believe going to become more and more significant. So we have, you know, the, insure, the, the question of the insurability or the insurance protection gap of climate events, and that's not just within Ireland. There's a there's a, there, there's a broader read across there, as I know the deputy um, <coughs> understands. So the important policy issue now, in addition to the specific issue in relation to the bill, is the subject of consideration at EU and international level, along with the Central Bank of Ireland and Department of Finance actively engaging on, on that issue. Um, so I, I, perhaps I might address the, I, I mean, I could set out the, the government policy on flooding, but the deputy has, has already amply done that, and I don't wish to, to take his time in, in simply repeating that. Um, but could I say, I, and I might address any further questions in, in my roundup. Is that okay, deputy? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister.